Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video and to everyone who owns NAS, please right now update it. Whether that's a firmware update or a software update, whatever you're running, whether it's a Drobo like what's over my shoulder, a WD MyCloud, a Synology, but especially a QNAP, please update your drives. Now like alt tab this video right now, go open up the dashboard and check for any software updates. But why am I making this video and why should you update it right now? Well, unfortunately, once again, QNAP has come under attack from ransomware, well, peoples, and unfortunately these devices are being locked up with ransomware, leaving your files under lock and key, which unfortunately is not really a great thing, with in some cases the ransomware costing up to 800 Australian dollars, which is definitely not cheap. So having updates is something that's really important. Now, yes, just updating is important, but what's actually going on with these ransomwares? Maybe you heard sort of late last year, there was also to some ransomware with QNAPs, but what's actually going on here? Well. Taking a closer look, this is specifically for QNAP devices where older and uh, just out of date software allows the network connections to be attacked. Now, at the moment, there are supposedly 564,000 QNAPs exposed with 450,000 of them being vulnerable as of the time of recording. Um, and these numbers are courtesy of port swiggers, swingers. Uh, but even QNAP's official history doesn't look amazing. I mean, looking at their uh, little notification sheets, it's um not looking so crash hot. So uh, at the moment, they are under attack and I just wanted to sort of pop in and make a quick little video letting really any NAS owner know to keep their devices up to date. As NAS devices, just like the one behind me, are really easy just to plop onto the network, configure once and basically forget about. Now, these particular attacks come in a few different forms, obviously because of the outdated software. Uh, the main one is just brute force attacks. There's no real kind of like 2FA or lockouts by default on some of these devices, meaning attacker can just get the IP address and or even just public address and hit it as many times as they want. And eventually they're going to brute force their way into the device. And especially if the device is just admin admin as the username and password, which really shouldn't be, um, it's going to be even easier for them to get into these particular devices. So that's the first way. Um, there are other sort of ways they can get in. They can inject malicious code uh, in the cross-site scripting vulnerability. There's also to an exploit where they can actually run commands uh, remotely from things like SSH and telnetting into the actual devices. So there's quite a few back doors that they're actually exploiting on the older versions of the software, which aren't quite as secure. Now, these type of attacks can then apply apply to many other devices, like again, the Synologies of the world, the Drobos and those kind of things. However, Synology and Drobo have a little bit of different kind of defaults and of course, they're not really the main ones that are being attacked in this particular story. So uh, it's a bit of a more of a problem for the QNAP owners out there. But again, really anyone really needs to take some steps to make sure that their NAS is secured, especially because your NAS device probably holds some pretty important data. It's not like they're just locking out your computer where you might have a backup somewhere. For a lot of people out there, their NAS is generally the only copy of data, which is really not the best thing. And a lot of companies like Synology and Drobo and all those kind of things allow sort of like third party softwares to be put in. And especially on the Synology side with their cloud backup software, you can connect your Synology NAS to a third party provider like say Backblaze and have ultra cheap offside storage for containing your backups, which sort of brings us into the what should you do about the uh, kind of whole situation. Now, obviously going ahead and just Updating the firmware and the software on these devices is the first thing, but having actual backups of your devices are also too pretty important. Again, we like to back up our computers and maybe some people who have servers back up their servers, but a lot of people kind of just set up their NAS and forget about it. Now, there's also two other things like, for instance, you can install the security counselor on the uh, QNAP side. I think Synology has a similar kind of security thing, but basically just does an audit of your system um, is the idea of it and gives you sort of little prompts that you probably should update things like that. Um, don't use admin admin as the username and password or really kind of admin as a password or username in general. Uh, for instance, if your name is Steve, call yourself Steve administrator because, well, then they don't have the username to start start with. Um, again, depending on your naming structure, maybe that's not such a good one for you, but just calling it admin already opens you up to a little bit of problems right there. Disabling SSH and Telnet is also to another good option. If you don't know what SSH or Telnet is, 
then disable it because you're not using it and it is a bit of a vulnerability right there. Also too, not using common ports like uh, 8080 and also to 443 is another great thing to make yourself a little bit more secure as a lot of these NASs do have like public facing uh, web interfaces. So if you're outside of your network, you can just jump on that little uh, public IP address and boom, you're into your system. So using different ports can in some cases help with security right there. But again, simply just updating can be absolutely major. Now there's big numbers that 500 some thousand devices that are at risk that I did mention, most of which are most likely on the same firmware and software release that was well shipped with the actual devices. Again, because they're little boxes that you might put in a cupboard or in a cabinet somewhere, it's really easy kind of just to forget about it and then you don't really keep it up to date and a lot of these devices don't always do automatic updates. Sure you can configure them to do automatic updates and in some devices you can even configure automatic restart so if it's an update that needs a restart it'll do it all itself which is really really nice to see but a lot of time out of the box when you just turn it on plug it into a network and go which is what a lot of people like to do with NASs they don't exactly have the best security policies applied by default and the amount of times I've seen admin admin Ooh, really not so great. Now for the QNAP owners out there, I'll leave links down in that description box to the QNAP kind of like official notification and also to how to go ahead and update your devices. But again, this really should apply to everybody who has a NAS out there. Just do your updates, please. And I've kind of said the same thing over and over, but it's one of those things that most of us like to do, but uh, if you haven't done an update in a while, please do it now. Otherwise, it's been a pretty short video, but that's about it for this video. I'll leave some news articles linked down in that description box as well. If you have a friend or family member who is running a QNAP device, please get them to do their updates because it is critically important, but also to anyone with a NAS or server or really any kind of storage device that's network connected, just do an update on it. Even if you're not a QNAP owner, Synology, Drobo, Windows Server even, just check for any updates, go ahead and do them. You'll be that much more secure, which is absolutely nice to have. Guys, thanks all for watching. Let me know if you run an as down in that comment section and I'll catch you all in the next one.